Today we're going to compare the Upper Baby Minu V2 and the Boogaboo Butterfly, two ultra compacts that are quite popular at the moment and which, despite actually having quite different characteristics, can be a bit tough to choose between. So let's jump straight into it then, looking at the advantages and disadvantages of each model in turn and focusing on their differences in terms of child comfort, ease of use, longevity and driving characteristics before ending with a discussion of under what conditions and uses one might make a better purchase over the other. And starting off with the Minu V2, the model clocks in at 7.6 kilos and folds down to 32 by 52 by 58 centimeters with the bumper bar attached. When it comes to child comfort, the Minu V2 seat has great dimensions overall in terms of its ability to carry a larger child, but it's important to note that the dimensions of the actual sitting surface, 45 centimeters for the seat back, 22 for the baseboard, and 13 for the adjustable leg rest, are on the shorter side, meaning that the recline position will be less comfortable past around two years old or so, both in terms of leg and, for taller children, head support, which makes the model a bit more oriented, in my opinion, towards shorter trips and just getting around, as opposed to the sort of stroller that a child, an older child in any case, would be comfortable spending all day in. As far as parent comfort is concerned, the Minu V2 has a non-adjustable handle height of 104 centimeters and a large, easily accessible, and very weight-capable shopping basket, able to hold up to 9 kilos. Folding the model can be easily accomplished with one hand, though the folded dimensions are pretty bulky versus other ultra-compacts, and while the model has both a handle and shoulder strap, it's not the sort of stroller that you'll want to have to carry around for long periods slung from your shoulder. In addition, when folded down, the Minu V2 also unfortunately doesn't fit within the IATA's guidelines for cabin luggage, meaning that you'll likely have to gate check it with a lot of airlines. Looking at longevity, the Minu V2 has a simply designed and sturdy folding system and a strong reinforced chassis structure that has proven itself, with the original Minu, to hold up very well without substantial loosening over time. It does have a bit of an Achilles heel in its brake system, which occasionally runs into problems down the line, in particular if it's not lubricated regularly. Though note that, if this does happen, it's not too difficult or costly to replace the brake wire. Lastly, when it comes to the model's driving characteristics, this is where the Minu V2 seriously excels. With that sturdy chassis supported atop well above average suspension for a model of this size, and a little larger than average rear wheels, and while the model is of course not made for any real off-roading, it can handle a degree of light rougher terrain, such as gravel, dirt roads, broken sidewalks, and so on, without either feeling too jittery, thanks to that shock absorption, as well as without risk of loosening up too much as a result of wear, if you need to traverse such conditions as an everyday thing. All right, let's move on to the butterfly then, which clocks in at an only slightly lighter 7.3 kilos, but folds down to a smaller 45 by 23 by 54 centimeters. The total length of the butterfly seat is almost identical to the Minu V2s at 121 centimeters long, but the dimensions of the seat surface are much better, with the same width of 34 centimeters, but a significantly longer seat back of 56 centimeters, a deeper baseboard of 26 centimeters, and a longer adjustable leg rest of 19 centimeters, all giving the butterfly a huge edge in terms of the length of time that the reclined position will remain optimally comfortable. The butterfly also has a slightly deeper recline than the Minu V2, though the upright position is a bit less vertical. And in addition, the butterfly's canopy also provides a bit worse sun coverage in comparison to the Minu V2, due to a mesh panel in the extension portion that doesn't have a flap to keep out the sun, and also has potentially less durable textiles as, at this point, there have unfortunately been many complaints that the model's seat liner tends to wear down a bit too quickly. Looking at parent comfort, the Butterfly has a slightly lower handle height at 102 centimeters and a shopping basket that, while also quite strong, large, and accessible versus the wider market, is a smidge less weight capable than the Minu V2s, carrying 8 kilos. Folding the Butterfly feels very similar to the Minu V2, namely, a process that can be accomplished with one hand, but which takes a bit more force than with weaker strollers, just as a result of the more substantial than usual build of both models. When folded, the butterfly also has both a handle on the leg rest if you leave it folded out, and a shoulder strap, though it's also uncomfortable to carry slung from the shoulder in my opinion, due to the strap being a bit too short. One serious advantage that the butterfly does have over the menu in terms of folding, however, is that its folded dimensions conform to IATA standards, making it more widely accepted as cabin luggage. 
Looking at longevity, the butterfly has a similarly sturdy and reinforced chassis and a slight edge in terms of simplicity in that it doesn't have any mechanisms like the Minu's brake system that are as susceptible to wear. That being said, the butterfly also doesn't have nearly as good suspension and has smaller wheels than the Minu V2, which means that, since in practice it's more or less impossible to avoid running into at least some degree of uneven terrain, jolts and jostling from such ground will have more of an effect on wearing down the butterfly than the Minu V2. Which leads me into the butterfly's driving characteristics, where the model feels quite sturdy to use, not loose or rickety, but where it's also one of those ultra compacts that struggles a bit more when strolling over even lighter cobblestones, broken sidewalks, or other bumpy terrain. So, which model should you get then? In my opinion, it's all down to the particulars of your intended use, so I'll break it down a bit. Both models are built very sturdily and are capable of holding up to all-day, everyday use without the risk of loosening up too much and becoming uncomfortably rickety, but the added terrain versatility with the Minu V2 does give it an edge if you live somewhere with rougher streets, or for travel, plan to go somewhere that's a bit bumpier. Some European or South American holiday destinations come to mind, though there are a lot of places like this. And the somewhat larger build and ability to use the model with the overnight approved Up a Baby bassinet also makes the Minu V2 a bit more appealing if you're planning on using it as your main everyday stroller with a newborn. For all other uses, however, such as if you live somewhere a bit smoother, like a lot of American suburbia, for example, or plan to travel to somewhere smoother, and or if you have a somewhat larger kid already who often naps in their stroller and you need something that will be more comfortable for all day excursions, basically for any situations where that slight added terrain versatility isn't a necessity, then I would probably go with the Butterfly for the better seat dimensions and its IATA compatible fold. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please subscribe, as this sort of support really helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about either of these models, we have standalone reviews that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.